Good morning, everybody. Col here. Welcome to my shop. We uh, got a few things today. We're going. It's going to be one of those days where we um, we do lots of little fiddly bits and pieces to the boxes. Um, I noticed uh, Mark Eckert, um first time up. Mark, we're getting towards the end of a box, so um, we're not going to be doing a lot of the, the beginning stuff but we're getting towards the end, so enjoy what you see and uh, we'll be starting a new project in a couple of weeks or so and um, then we'll, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll get onto that uh, uh, shortly. Um, now, first of all, last week there were quite a few uh, questions. So I had to go and do a little bit of research and this is my shopping list, so I thought, I'll get on with that, and I'll I'll, I'll just answer those questions that, that that were that put to us. If you're not if if you've asked a question and you're not watching, well then of course you're going to catch up with this a little bit later down the track. But if you are watching, um, here's the answer to one of your questions last week. So the first one, up, Russell, you were you were talking about the links to the drill bits, and I presume from uh, your conversation you meant these. And they the little hinge the hinge drills. Now, you can most hardware stores will carry um, sets like this. Um, they're quite uh, quite a good little set and different sizes. Um, I know uh, Jim Carroll carries uh, two or three different sizes as well. So if you get onto um, Carroll's Wood Turning Supplies, and there's a link to all of these things down below. So if you scroll down, you'll find that there's a link to all of the things that I'm talking about during, during this little bit here. So have a look at, the, uh, at Jim's. He's got a couple of them. I think they're about $12.60 or something like that each. And you can get three or four different sizes. So if you talk to Jim um, on Tuesday, he's not open on Monday, of course. Um, have a chat to him on Tuesday and I'm sure he can get on to you. So Russell, if you're, if you're listening or you're watching, um, they're called hinge drill bits, and they're, of course, made by PNN. There are other versions of it, but that's the one that I've got anyway. So have a look at Jim. Uh, JB, um, you were talking, you asked a question about the low angle block plane. Now, this particular one that I have here, this is, th this is the one that I use, and it's a Veritas one, and the the plane itself, um, it's just a simple plane. What I've done with it, I've added on a little handle on the back of it so that it's easy to, to manipulate. I've got quite big hands and it, it gives me a little bit of control when I'm trying to, to work with it. So rather than trying to sort of hold over the top of the, the plane like that, I've actually got something to hang on to when I'm working with it. So um, quite a nice little plane and you can get them from... Um, Quite a few places. The the most common one is uh, at, at Carbotech. Now I know Carbotech in Brisbane have got it because that's where I bought that one from. The um, other stores around the country, I know there's a, a, a store in, in Sydney and Melbourne and Perth, and I know that they have. I, I'm not sure if they they carrying the same range, but I'm sure if you got onto them, you could um, they'll they'll put you in the right direction or point you in the right direction for that. So again, link below, have a look, scroll down, you'll find the link to Carbotech and um, you'll get them from there. Um, so yeah, have a look for it, you'll find it. Now, Gaz White, Gaz, steel screws. Now, there are lots of people who use steel screws and very small steel, steel screws. There are different stores that you can go to to get them. Most of the hardware stores will carry um, a, a range of steel screws. Now, whether they're the right size or not, well, you're going to have to sort of, if you inquire at the counter, I'm, course, I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll help you. But the, the really, really small ones, if you buy 
some of the, um, the fancier, more expensive hinges, you'll find that they'll put one in for you anyway and use that as your cutting tool to, to cut the thread for, your, for the screws so you don't rip the, tip, the top off your, your brass screws. I know in the, the stuff that I get from Bruso always has one in it um, and that's where I get quite a lot of my stuff from um, and that's where I have these spare steel screws. But there are fastening places. I know there's one in Canberra. There's a, a, a hardware fastening uh, company in Fishwick, and they um, they carry a wide range of, of various bits and pieces. I don't know the name of the store. I just know it's there somewhere. I've been there many years ago, um, and I I do know that they were carrying them because I was using them lots of years ago. But um, yeah, so um, you need to have a look around to, to find those. Um, and by the way, my glasses fill up the space behind my ears, can't carry the pencil. <laughs> you were asking why don't I put a pencil behind my ear. So that's not going to happen. Okay, now Sally Ann, um, I... I hadn't seen your name up on the list there a while ago. So you're obviously just a new a newcomer, um, and you were asking about hinges. Now, over the past few months that we've been doing our shows, we've, I've talked about hinges quite a bit. And if you go back through our shows, you'll find you'll you'll find um, references to where we buy our hinges from. But in the immediate thing, I use. Um, four different range, uh, four different types of hinges. I've got um, Brusso hinges, which are a US version, and you have to get them imported. So you have to go online for those. I use um, Hawthorne hinges, and your UK ones. Um, Crawford hinges, which are Irish, so <laughs> they're all over the world. Yep. So other way, around. other way around. Other way around, is it? Crawford. Hawthorne, yeah. <laughs> Pammy just reminding me, I've got it all back to front. Hawthorne are the Irish hinges. I should read my notes. Um, and Crawford hinges are the English ones. Now, the Hawthorne ones and the Crawford ones are generally just side rail hinges and locks. And they are reasonably expensive. They're like, you've got to pay import costs and all that sort of stuff. The next down from that are the Brusso hinges. But if you want a, a reasonably cheap, good Australian made one, um, Gurner hinges are quite good, they're, they're, they're from Melbourne so you can get onto them. If you want a, a cheaper range again, Jim Carroll carries, carries uh, a quite a, che a cheap range of, of hinges that are, sometimes need a bit of work but um, you, can, uh, you can get them to work quite well, it's just a little bit of effort to get them to fit properly. So. Have a look at Jim's site, and um, you'll find you'll find different hinges there. So there are there are a couple of the the, the things about hinges. But uh, like I said, look back through our shows, and you'll find um, different um, different references to to the hinges. And Terence, you were talking about the Linisher. Pammy, you want to just swing that camera around to point to that? You were talking about you were talking about, you're asking about um, the sandal linisher. This sandal linisher is uh, a, a Woodman. Um, it, it, it's quite good. It's got a nice big uh, disc on it, um, and the belt. It, it's all attached to my dust extractor, which is a, a Festool, and it'll attach up to any sort of dust extracting system. But uh, it's it's quite a good machine, and. Um, I've got it set up on wheels so I can wheel it around my shop and put it anywhere I like and, and, and do the work on it. So that is a, a tool that you can buy at most of the big hardware stores. I'll just come back to me. Um, most of the big hardware stores that, that carry bigger machinery and equipment and things like that, you'll get something similar to that around the place. I bought that one from Gregory's in, um, in Brisbane. Um, as to where I buy most of my equipment, machinery, um, they do um, carry a, a really good range of, of, um, of uh, equipment and machinery. So have a look around and you, you can always Google 
the different types of machinery. So that's it for the questions that I had this week, uh, last week. So if you have any other questions, you can always uh, pop a question up there. And um, uh, hello, Anthony has just answered uh, one of the questions about the store um, in Canberra about um, the the screws, um, specialty fasteners. Um, so obviously um, they're there, still there. Um, like I said, I used them years ago, but if they're still there, then obviously you can find some stuff in there that, that'll suit the job you want to do. Okay, so let's get on with what we're going to do today. Let's get rid of all of this. Now, during the week, I wasn't going to do this, but, I, but during the week, what I did was um, I tidied up the bigger box and I put the hinges on it. I put the hinges on it and I made it a red base rather than a green base. Um, if you see that one there, this is the, this is the, the smaller one we've been working on. And one, of the, one of the things that I was going to do was um, along the back edge here, I know if, if, you, if you have a look in here, you can see there's a gap down there when you close off and open it. You can see that there. If I was using thicker material and I had to close that gap up a little bit, you'd find that that inside edge there would, would eventually start binding. Okay, so what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to um, alleviate that problem by cutting a little rebate, uh, oh, sorry, a chamfer on the back edge of those. So I have to pull the boxes apart. And then we're going to round over the top edges of the sleeves. So these ones. These are the sleeves that I made last week for, for this box. And you can see I've already made the sleeves for the other box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to round over the top edges of these so I'll show you how they work. And we're also going to cut them to size. You can, also, you can see there that they actually stick up a little bit too far. They should only come up about five millimetres but we'll cut them down to size. I'll show you how to go about that. And then we've got some special things that we're going to do with these ones here. Even though they're set up right so that it all works, so it works quite well, I'm, I'm still going to show you what we can do with the box apart from using it as a jigsaw puzzle box, which is what's going to happen with this box. So, let's go back to getting this stuff off the out of the way. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to disassemble it, disassemble it. So I need my screwdriver. Okay. So all I'm doing here is I'm taking this off. Now you also remember last week I showed you a little trick with, uh, with a texter. It's actually not a little tick, little trick. What it is it's a uh, something that you should be doing you'll find you'll find that in in some some hinges not necessarily these ones these are Brousseau hinges the US version oh sorry I beg your pardon I must apologize that is not they're not Brousseau hinges they're actually Gurner hinges these are the 19 millimeter Gurner hinges and uh, butt hinges so they're Australian made but I also find that sometimes the, the holes in the hinges are not lined up this way or this way or something's happened during the processing of them and they're not in the right place. So when you put them in place, you want to make sure that the hole itself is in the right place there so that it, you don't turn them around. You, if you turn it around like that and the hole's in a different place, you're not going to get the correct fit that you did when you started with. So on the back of it, I always fit my base first. I've got a little R, so that's my right hand side. So that bit goes on the base. And I just sort of started that little habit so that um, we don't lose our way. No one's going to see it because on this side I've got an L. That way my hole in there is going to line up. So very important that you, that you do things like that to give you some sort of reference down the track as you go past. So let's pull that out. 
put those bits over there. Now what I want to do is I want to run a chamfer along this edge here. I need to do it onto both of those. And I generally do it on all of the boxes that I do. If I get another box down just to show you, you can see even on this one here, you can see I've run a little chamfer along the back edge there. It defines the back edge. It makes it look part of the box. It's deliberate um, and, and it doesn't look out of place. So that's what we're going to, to do. Just get rid of my questions and answers. Now, the router bit that I'm using is my chamfer bit. This is the one that comes in our kit, one of our, uh, our, our router bit kits. It comes in the first one, of course. It's the um, oh, spanner. Um, it comes in uh, the ultimate cutter kit. You'll also get it in the master cutter kit, of course, because you get all the router bits. And it, all, oh, it also comes in an upgrade kit. So if you've got... No, no, doesn't come in the upgrade kit, no, sorry. It's already in the, in the, in the ultimate cutter kit. No, it's not in the ultimate cutter kit. Yes, it is. Yep. Oh, I beg your pardon. Geez, I'll tell you what, if Pam wasn't here, I'd be lost. i tell you. She said she was right. It comes in the ultimate, ultimate upgrade kit and it comes in the master cutter kit. So if you buy either of those, gosh, giving things away and I shouldn't be. <laughs> One of those days, I think. Okay, so what I'm doing here, you might be able to come in really close on that. I'm just, I'm just doing this by eye. And now I don't want to take too much off. I just want to take a tiny little shaving off the edge of it. So as I'm adjusting, what I'm adjusting it to, just bring it in so it touches and then I'll just raise it a tiny little bit. Remember, we only all we're doing here is, is just taking a shaving off. Let's check it on this side where I can see. We're only taking a shaving off just to alleviate any binding that might occur. Tiny little bit there. That should be good. So it's, a, it's not actually going to take a great deal off. Now remember, against the rotation of the router bit, so the router bit's going to spin around this way. And so when we start, we push in so that the corner of the, of the box meets the centre of the router bit. Okay, so just come down into the top of there. So where my thumbnail is there, you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push in so the action that we have is push in, roll along till it, the, the corner meets again, and then pull out. So you need to go in sideways so it's got that, that sort of rotational action. If you don't, what happens is you flick off the end of it and then you round over the corner. Okay, so we don't want to round over any of the corners, so therefore we've got to start right on the point. So, ears on everybody. I think I've got them. Better turn some power on here. So now you can see, if you can see that, you can just see I've taken the corner off it. Just a tiny little bit. Just like so. Do the same to the other one. I could go all the way around the box, but I don't want to do that. What you can see now, 
when you look at it, you can see that just that tiny little bit taken off it. And when you look at the end of it, you can actually see the, the chamfer meets nicely there where the joint is. So it's quite nice, quite nice looking effect. And while I've got that set up, I might, do, might as well do this one as well. It'll take me a few minutes to get the bits off it. So I want to carry on with this one a little bit later in the show. These are the 25 millimeter hinges um, from Gurner. Now, when you're cutting the rebate, just make sure that you use the correct size router bit. So I've got my R on there. stuff okay ears on Okay, we'll put that aside and we'll bring back our other one. Okay, so that's another part of the box that's, that's complete. As you can see, during the process, during the processing of the box, you're going to be spending quite a bit of time swapping and changing router bits, particularly if you're using it all, 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 all machinery to build your boxes. If you're doing it by hand, well then of course I would sit that on a, a clamp situation there and I would plane that off with um, probably my block plane or I'd, I'd use a small smoothing plane uh, like this. So there's, there's lots of ways of doing that. I find this one quite a simple and easy way. And as you saw I could do two boxes at the same time. So I'm in the process of doing that. Now the next thing we're going to do top. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fit my panel. I'm going to re uh, round over the top edges of the sleeves that I have in here. Now depending on what you do with the box there's no there's not a, 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 a huge necessity to actually make sleeves for it, you can go without them if you like, depending on uh, what you're going to do with the box. Um, what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to define the centre of the box where the, the jigsaw puzzle is going to be, uh, away from the darker panel around the outside. But So that's why we've got that in there, and it, that sort of jazzes it up a tiny little bit as well, so we're going to make it look nice. So what I'm going to do is, is I want to round over the, the top edges of it. Um, now to round over the top edges I'm going to use our bullnose bit. Now the bullnose bit comes in two versions. There's the TBN4 which is that one there and this one which is a TBN2. Now, they both have different, um, different sizes. They're, they're, um, if you look at this one here, you can see that the, the, the space, the distance between the, this area here, the cave in it, is, is only four millimetres. 
Okay, so that would be something that I would use if I was doing something like this, where I've got a really thin sleeve in there. It's four millimeters, and I would use a four millimeter bit. Okay. This one here has a much bigger spacing in the bottom uh, across here. That spacing across there, whoop, that spacing across there is seven millimeters. And I generally use that in the bigger boxes or the bigger, bigger pieces. So thicker piece of material, of course you're going to use the bigger one, the smaller one. We'll discard right now. And we'll just go through and fit that in. Now to get this right, it takes a little bit of adjustment. You also need a fence. So all I'm doing here is adjusting it so that the, the, the adjusting it so that the top edge and the bottom edge actually touch in the rebate. So it takes a little bit of fiddle. Get to come up. A little bit more. There we have it. Okay, now we need a fence. The fence that I have, you can see I've tibby and four, bullnose bit, and I've cut the shape of the bullnose bit in the bottom of the fence. So all my fences, somebody asked me through the week, um, how many fences do I have? Um, I've got pretty much one for every router bit that I use on the route on the table, and they're all cut to fit. The other question that was asked was, how many tie down points do we have? On our table, we've got two, one there and one there. They're eight mil threaded hole. And we can just run that through into there. Now, when you set the, this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this so that my piece of timber is at the bottom of the cove in the router bit. So, clamp. Clamp that in place. Now, this is where we need a test piece. And I had a test piece. I've put it down somewhere and I've lost it. This bit will do. Okay, so all I have to do is run this through here. Now, normally I've used a, a bigger piece, and I had a bigger piece. I think I've discarded it somewhere. Can't see it anywhere. So all I'm going to do is slide through the piece there. What I wanted to do is I want it to come all the way through, and if you're sitting up a little bit, or the fence is too far back, you'll find that it will skip like so. And when that skips like that, it cuts too much out of the back edge of there, which means it doesn't line up when it fits into the box. So we want it to run s smoothly straight through, the, through both pieces. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use a push block. So I'm going to sit the push block on there, and I'm just going to slide that straight through and hold it down at the same time. So it should be good. So ears on. Now remember, this is the test piece.
Okay, so now we have a look at it. You can see that it's a little bit flat on the top and I've taken a little bit too much off the top edge, which means that the router bit's got to go down a little, uh, come up a little bit, and also the fence has got to go back a little bit. So, a little adjustment. That. Too far. As you can see, very small adjustment. Now we're just going to use the other side of that piece of timber. Use on. And as you can see, that's pretty nice. It's got a nice little curve on the top of it. Okay, so you can see that there. Really nice. So now I'll just go ahead and do the rest of them. Do all my pieces. Okay, so here's my box, and now I have a nice rounded over top on all of those. It just softens the edge, makes it that little bit nicer. And the problem we have here at the moment is that it's a little bit too high, so I'm going to have to dock some off the side or the edge of it. Um, part of the reason I make them a little bit longer than they should, or a little bit wider than they should be, is so that we can do processes like this and, and, and have um, a quite a safe working space to actually do the stuff that we have to do. So that actually looks really nice. And by having it rounded over, you can actually see that the joints have disappeared into the timber, which is what you want it to do. You want it to make it look really, really nice. And so it looks actually like part of the job. So nice little mitre joint. You don't need to glue these in because the mitre joint will actually hold it all in place, it's not going to go anywhere. So now we need to dock it down to size. When you look at it, I've got quite a bit exposed there. I don't need that much. I can drop it down, say, to uh, take a few millimetres off there. So if I come down to about five mil, um, like so. The other reason that I use make them a little bit longer. If you have uh, something where you're not using something that thick, I can drop that down into there anyway and um, you'll see. You'll see that that's and it fits. As you can see a bit snug. You can see how it's dropped it right down. Um, and that's that's what we're trying to achieve with the bays in the bottom. So you can you can actually do that, and make it fit really nicely and looks really nice, just with the, the timber showing. But we're not doing that. Get him out. So put the bays back in. Like I said, today's going to be very fiddly. Right. Now what I want to do is measure. So you can see that that's 15 millimetres. Okay, so we want... Um, uh, 
really hard to see. But that's 15 millimetres from there to there. Um, I'm going to get to, to make it, um, say, 19 millimetres to the end. So I'll stick that up to there. Get my pencil that I had there. Put my mark on. So I only need to mark one of them. And then we're going to go over to the drop saw. So, just, um, just turn that off. We want to do a bit of shifting here. Um, I think maybe I'll put it up here. So we've got to work on the fence. Okay, let's see if that works. That should work. Need my fence. How are we going for questions there, Pammy? We got a few. Have to find the one I marked. There it is. Radio arm saw on here. I've got the, my my marking. That's set. Just lock my fence into place. Put my block in there, and I can just cut that straight off but I want to do them all at the same time. So the best thing to do is that, sit them over, push them both up against the fence and hold them down with my hold down. Okay, so ears on everybody. Same time. As you can see, we didn't take very much off, did we? Okay, let's go back around to... Yeah. And then we refit. And as you can see, a lot smaller. It'll make it easier for the lid to actually close over. there we have it so nice clean neat fit and then our next task we've got those done the next task the next thing that I do to them is when I've got the box like this this edge needs sanding now I could grab my sandpaper And I've got various grades of sandpaper, so it's, it goes right through a whole range of different different uh, grits. And I could sand each part just by working it like so. And work my way around the box. But there's no guarantee that I've taken the same amount of material off here as I have here or vice versa. So there's no guarantee that it's going to be flat. 
So to make it flat, to make sure that I've done the whole surface, the same sandpaper I've set up on, on sanding boards. Now, the sanding boards, th these are really easy to make. If you're, um, if you're doing quite a bit of sanding, it's always a good idea to have tools like this around your workshop that you can pick up at a moment's notice because it always does help. So this one's 400, so I've got 400 written on there. So let's try that. So you can see 400. And I have a sheet of sandpaper on a piece of MDF on all of, uh, all of the grades that I have. I have. So I have various boards. Here's one with 800. Okay, that's wet and dry, of course, and I've, you can see that I've used it a bit. But this is what I do. So, oh, squeaky. Not a lot of pressure. And then I'll rotate. Oh, flinch stuff. It's worse than fingernails down a blackboard. So, all I'm doing is making sure that I'm perfectly flat all the way around the edges. I've got nice, clean, sharp edges on the inside, but that's all. So, we work down through the grades. And that's what I will do with both of those, and I will get them fitting really, really nicely. Just keep turning around. As you can see, I'm not moving it very far. There's no need to go very far. If you have a, a, a bigger, a bigger uh, job to do, well then of course you make longer, bigger boards by laying lots of bits and pieces of paper on there. You can see you've got a couple of marks here that I, I've got to take out. So a little mark here. So this one here is going to need a little bit of effort and a little bit of work to get it to get exactly right the way I like it. So I've got a bit of work to do to that one. So I'll leave that one at the stage. What I'll do is I'll put the, put the box back together. I'll pull it apart when I need to clean it. And then we'll go on and I'll show you a little something that I do. We're actually not going to get the latch fitted today. Um, in the finishing process next week, we probably do that. So, that around the right way. Okay, so this is my left-hand side. This is the bottom. So my hinge that has the L on it. The one that's going to go in there. Screwdriver. So as you can see, it's um, there are, the, the processes are relatively simple and um, Screw them down a little bit harder, JB. Or if they won't go, when you screw them down a little harder, just loosen them off a tiny little bit. They, um, they won't move. So I've got to head the screws later. East Coast fasteners, where are they? Port, Mac Port Macquarie. Oh, okay, so that's not very far away from us. Those small screws. For those of you who are just south of us. Pretty much that little box is done apart from adding a couple more screws into the into the hinges, sanding and finishing and adding a lock. Uh, adding the lock's going to take a little bit of a fiddle, but basically there's 
the box. Really nice on the back. You can see it's um, it fits really neatly. Got a, a, a quite a nice um, quite a nice chamfered edge, so it looks deliberate. Looks like it needs to be there. And when we open it out, everything looks really really nice when you when you put it together. So basically, that's the box before finishing. Now, I've got 15 minutes left, so what I wanted to do was talk to you about this box. I'll just shift some of this stuff. Show you another little trick that I, that I do sometimes. And um, let's get rid of all of this. I really need a bigger bench, don't I? Maybe not. Just somewhere to put everything when I'm finished with it. Dave Stanton's going to have a bit of a, a bit of an exciting show this morning. I believe he's going to be um, doing things to Malamine, putting edges on. Um, ironing on some strips and so forth. So it should be a, an interesting show. Okay. Now, don't need that. Now what I did with this one, with this box, if we have a look here, I made a nice little red vase bottom for it. And then I made the sleeves that go in there. Same as I did in the last one, in the smaller box. And that's all well and good. It makes it a nice little box if you want to put quite a little, bit, uh, quite a bit of um, stuff in it. So if you want to um, put a puzzle in there and, and work it there all the way up to the top of that. But what you have when you look at the top of it, you've got all this space in the top. So when you put it together, you've got quite a lot of space, which makes this box really receptive to being used as a display case or a display box of some description. You may not need the red baize in the bottom, but what you can do is you can build your panel halfway up the inside of the box so that it will um, house other objects. So this is how we go about it. I've built these and what I want to do is I want to make panel that fits over there. Now that panel so happens to be this one here. I've made this and I'll show you what I've used it for but I want it to sit up a little bit. I don't want it on the bottom of the, of the, the box. So here's what we do. Work out how high you want this sitting up and we're going to cut the bottom off our sleeves. Now our sleeves are already been mitered so we should be able to get that to work really nicely. So I want to sit up probably 10 mil. So I'm going to cut the bottom 10 millimeters off the bottom of my sleeves. Okay, so I've marked that there and just going to cut that bit off and that will be my support for the panel. Okay, so back to the back to the, sh the show, back to the, the saw. I want 
10 millimeters. Just to make sure I get that right. Like so. Again, same process, just put them both together. Ears on. And again, ears on. Go back to our bench. Now, if we've made these correctly, you can see the thin pieces we just cut off will fit in the box. You don't need the bays in the bottom, of course, when you do this. Now, they will get sanded up and they'll look really, really nice. But as you can see, now we have the lining around the inside of the box and our panel will fit on there. And then the leftover pieces of sleeve will fit on the top. Like so. Okay, so now I have a display box for something. And now it just happens to be the display box for for all you golfers out there. As you can see, you can do lots of different things with it. And then, where's the lid? The lid can have the bays in it. And it fits on like so. And so things sit above the top of the box into the cavity that's left of the, of the lid. So you have, um, you have another little box that you can do and it has a nice little base top on it. You can put a bit of base on top of the, the, the um, support panel. There's so many things that you can do with it. So um, this box becomes a very useful box for lots of different things. So if you put the hinges back on it, exactly the same thing. I'll just put the hinges on. And the left one, of course, goes there. So it's quite a it's quite a simple little little process, and, and as you can see, it, 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 I haven't done anything extraordinary. I haven't tried to um, make fancy tools or anything like that to to do the tasks. Um, all I've done is is just used what's been available to me. So it's just a matter of thinking through the process thinking through what needs to be done and uh, you can always come up with a solution. So that's where we're going to finish today. I, 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 if I try to um, fit the latch today it'll um, It'll only turn into a rush and um, it won't get things done in time. And so next week, what we might do is might fit a latch and I'll go through the sanding process uh, for the outside and we'll work on putting a finish on. 
So then we have our little box that looks really nice. And then all we need is a latch. Now the latches we're going to put on, so for those of you who are going to be watching next week, um, uh, there's a number of different latches that I have here. These little fold over laps, latches. Now these are the these are a Chinese version, man, but they, they still look quite effective. And then we've got a wider one as well. So we've got three different ones there. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I brought in from um, from Ireland, the fine hardware um, company that, that supplies our hinges, or doesn't supply them, I buy them from them, um, also have these little fancy little locks. Now you can't see them in the plastic bag, I'm not going to get them out because there's lots of bits to them. And they're little press button latches, so we just press it down and this bit fits on here and you just press the end of it. So we'll, um, we'll have a little look at that and I might even actually um, over, during the week, I might, um, I might have a little go. Uh, uh, well, I'll fit them to to something and uh, show you how how that works as well. So, quite a nice little little latch, and um, it should look really really nice in the in the box. So, that's that's going to happen next week, and um, we'll also do some finishing next week. So we get that sorted, and um, we'll take it from there. Now. Um, if you like what we saw today, please um, give us a thumbs up or something like that. And if you haven't uh, already subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and we'll give you a reminder when, um, when the show's, yeah, show's happening. So, Derek, you, uh, you mentioned um, for the, the screws repair shop for guitars. Um, generally, they do have those sorts of things. So... Um, need to have a little bit of a look around like I said I get my hinge the, the steel screws from from um, purchase of, of, of hinges from car um, from um, Brusso so yeah anyhow so that's it for today um, thanks for watching I hope you have a good uh, week those of you who are in lockdown stay safe please and um, I will see you all next Sunday mm -hmm.